Hey y'all, Moses here. Today we're going to be doing a very quick update to the settings for in and outside of PUBG graphics and otherwise. Uh, I've done this video a couple of times in the past. Not a lot of the stuff outside the game has changed, uh, but I just want to show you uh, just again a cursory overview of how to set your PUBG up for the maximum visibility and uh, for mostly performance based as well. I prefer visibility over total performance though, so that's just something to keep in mind. It's not 100% about frame rate, it's about being able to see your enemies the clearest as possible. Uh, all right, so the first thing you wanna do is open up your NVIDIA control panel. Sorry, AMD users, this video is not for you. Uh, manage 3D settings, make sure you have player unknowns Battlegrounds added to your list of programs. You go to add, add a selected, oop, that's the wrong thing entirely. All right, so let's make sure we do this right. Add, browse, and then go to your Steam apps file and find your TSL game EXE. You can do this with uh, multiple clients, but all you need to do is uh, the TSL game right there. All right, so you have that in there, and then you want to set your uh, power management mode to perform maximum performance. This is a negligible uh, increase in, in video output as far as uh, you know, just the power setting it uses, but who wouldn't prefer maximum performance, so I, I have that set to that. Threaded optimization is the key, however. Turn on threaded optimization. And uh, maximum pre-rendered frames is, I think, default set to one. So that's what it is. But threaded optimization is the one you want to do. And now if you're interested in uh, setting your digital vibrance up or down, uh, if you want that saturated look to your colors, if that's the way you prefer it, you can increase your digital vibrance uh, to about 75%. That's what I have done in the past. Uh, but for now, I leave mine at default. I no longer use digital vibrance. I just stopped. No real reason. Let's not read into it too much. Apply those settings, and you'll be good to go into the game. So let's launch this bad boy. Uh, now, this is for the most recent patch, remember, patch 19. Uh, so everything is current as of this week. And uh, there are a couple of changes, mostly uh, with the addition of the um, of the sharpening filter. And now I will jump into a game uh, as best really quick here to show you. Um, the difference is, so just give me a moment and I'll rejoin you when we're back in the game. All right. So while we are in the lobby, I'm going to show you, uh, my settings. So, uh, just a heads up, a couple of things that are a little bit different than the average user. I run at 1440p resolution. I also run at FOV 85. This is something I've covered in a previous video. This is personal preference. If you want that maximum view distance or maximum viewing angle, you can set it to 103. It gives you this kind of fisheye effect. You can see all the things all around you. The reason I like FOV 85 is for that center point focus because you get a little bit more visibility at that center point where most players will focus their attention most of the time. A lot of people will say, well, look to the edges of your screens and you'll see more, uh, which is true. But it's just, on average, I find myself looking at that center point. Anyways, uh, I play with FOV 85. Brightness is 86. My lobby FPS is unlimited. You can cap it. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think that some people have stated that there is a benefit to capping it at 30 FPS for power consumption, graphics, performance, etc. My in-game FPS limit is unlimited. You can obviously use display-based or custom if you like. Smooth to frame rate, I encourage you to research on your own. I'm not going to be covering it in this video. It's a, um, I think it's kind of a similar technology to VSync. I'm going to leave a link down in the description that you can take a look at and find out all about smooth frame rate on your own and, and kind of determine if it's good for you. Uh, so my overall quality settings are custom, obviously. My screen scale is 120. That just sharpens everything up just a little bit more. My anti-aliasing is set to high. I, I've experimented. I prefer the, the sharpness look of, uh, or this, uh, I just prefer the look of, of, of high settings on anti-aliasing. If you have a lesser computer than I do, obviously you can turn this down to low or very low. It's not going to matter that much. Post-processing, I've changed from medium, which is what I used to run, uh, to very low. Uh, I, and I've instead substituted that with the sharpen filter. Now, the shadows are very low. Textures are on ultra just so the game looks good. And effects and foliage are very low. So I'm going to rejoin you here shortly once we get on the ground. And I can show you all about the post-processing and sharpened filters. All right. So you can see that right now I'm running at 170 plus frames. I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's the early game. Nothing's really happening. Um, but I think this would be a good place to kind of show you 
the difference between my previous settings and my current settings. So I'm going to reset my settings to the way they used to be. So the first one was be 103 FOV. And post post dressing was on medium. Sharpen was off. And I think that is that. All right. So you can see that this is what it looks like in my previous settings. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, again, demonstrate the reason why I use FOV85. So this is me just looking at a window. All right. Nothing really to see here. But you can imagine there being enemies, etc. Uh, but this is what it looks like. You can see a lot of the landscape left and right of me. Uh, but my primary concern is what's in this window. Let's say I'm over here. All right. So uh, standard issue positioning for an engagement. Now let's change that FOV to 85. Bam. So you can see how much of a difference this makes for visibility in hard to see places like these windows, etc. Now you do lose those edges. Don't get me wrong. You're going to lose those edges, but for for what what you're primarily focused on in the center point of the screen, you get a lot more uh, you get a lot more information uh, when you are center point focused. Anyway, so the next thing I want to show you is the difference between post processing effects. Now I have always said that medium gives you that excellent sharpness. Now if you turn it to very low, you'll see things are a little bit more washed out. So if you're playing on low, um, it, it you kind of lose some of that fine grain detail. Uh, like, you know, it could be a helmet in a window. It could be uh, someone moving in the grass. You kind of lose that, okay? So the one thing that I do like about it, now going back to medium, is you can see, and you can see it in the texture of this rock really close to me, how how dark it gets on medium, okay? So again, to show you the difference, down to very low, apply. Everything does kind of brighten up a little bit, including the interiors of these buildings ahead of me here. So I'll just kind of show you that up close demonstration, like right here. Again, looking at medium. Things kind of darken a little bit on the interior. You can kind of see that. And back down to very low. Bam. A little bit brighter, not by a lot, but a little bit. Maybe enough that you see someone uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise seen. Now, how can you get the best of both worlds? Well, guess what? They've added it to the game. You better believe it. It's that sharpen filter. Bam. Back to that sharp looking, you know, that medium post-processing look. But the one thing you get the benefit of now is that brightness of very low uh, post-processing and uh, the sharpness of, uh, of what that medium setting brought you in the past. So that sharpen filter in combination with the uh, low or very low rather post processing gives you a little bit of a bump in frames, not by a lot. Uh, and you also get a little bit more visibility, which is always my priority when selecting my graphic settings is that interior visibility. Now, this works obviously in a multitude of different situations, um, but uh, I, I have found that through my testing that this, this these graphic settings um, uh, are, are the best. Now, I, I, I don't think that a lot of you may agree with the FOV aspect, um, but regardless, I, I think that uh, really if you're looking to see more enemies, spot people a little bit better, that uh, that this is the better the better setup. Now, there's not much to say around the uh, color blindness stuff. I know that there is um, some some interesting settings in there, like if you want purple blood, purple crosshair, there, that kind of stuff. I think that uh, visibility around hits is generally pretty good, regardless of what color you use. Um, but I have found that these settings, uh, to me, uh, are, are the best options right now for visibility. Um, but uh, obviously, there's still some more experimentation to be done. I just wanted to give you guys this quick update since so many people have asked me about it. Uh, so that's all I wanted to let you know about. I am now headed out on the road. For the next three weeks, I'll be in California and then off to Gamescom in Germany. Uh, very excited to bring you guys some more vlog footage, etc. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WTF Moses and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash WTF Moses. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Like the video if you liked it. Sub uh, subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Until next time, guys, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you out there.